What do a Pagani Zonda Roadster, a Bugatti Veyron, and a Lamborghini Aventador all have in common? Now, although there are many things you could say, I'm sure your first guess would be that they use electromagnets, specifically in the ignition system and the alternator. But how do these electromagnets even work? Well, you've come to the right place, my friend, as I shall today teach you the wizardry behind all the electrical appliances that you will ever use. I will begin by focusing on a copper wire at the atomic level. As you can see, there are positive cations floating within a sea of negatively charged valence electrons. The wire currently has a neutral charge. Now, let's get these electrons flowing to produce electricity. What happens to its charge? Let's try putting an electron next to the wire. Well, nothing happened. This is because the overall density of electrons and cations remain the same. But most of us know that electrons are never still. What if we move one parallel to the flow of electricity? Interestingly, it is now attracted by the wire. This is because of relativity. So special relativity expresses the idea of length contraction, which explains that things, when moving, are slightly contracted in that direction due to perspective. So when a sprinter is running, in the perspective of a bystander, he becomes slightly skinnier. However, to the sprinter, not only the bystander, but also the world around him has contracted slightly. This idea directly applies to electromagnets. Now, as we view the sprinter's perspective, let us do the same for the electron outside the wire. To this electron, it seems as if the cations are moving. Since that is the case, they are slightly contracted. Now, here comes the mind-blowing part. Since the electron is moving, the space between the cations is also moving in its perspective. This causes the space between them to be slightly contracted. As a result, there is a higher density of cations within the wire than the electrons, so the wire gains a positive charge. This causes the electron to be attracted to the wire. If it moves in any other direction, it will be either repelled or attracted with less intensity. The aspect of relativity applies to charges. So how does this apply to electromagnets? Well, let's take a look at our good old model. Do you agree that electrons are always moving? If you agree with that, then you have the answer. Due to natural probability and what we solved before, the valence electrons deviate toward one side of the atom and line up their spins, ultimately causing the atom to have two poles. Now this dipole effect can add up with more and more atoms, creating a large magnet. So in conclusion, well, I don't have time for a conclusion, so thank you for watching.